Hi friends. Um, so it's me again. What am I doing with the screen? Sorry if that made you dizzy. Sorry if I, because my nose is profoundly red. Um, that is because after today's treatment, my nose is running like a fountain. So um, what I have discovered because my friend Jason told me this. I'd never taken alcohol. My 41, or alcohol, Alka-Seltzer. Um, I'd never had used Alka-Seltzer in the entire my entire 40 years. And so my friend Jason says, you must try it. Try the citrus. It tastes like uh, orange soda or, you know, like sun-kissed or something. And it dries everything up perfect. So I'm just thinking that this is going to be like ungodly and it's going to be gross and everything. Not at all. So if you ever have like flu-like symptoms or just a really bad runny nose, Alka-Seltzer Citrus. Um, it's amazing. So just finished treatment number six. And so what does that mean? Things have changed since we talked last um, my CA-125 levels, the tumor markers that um, are present when you have cancer, one, CA for cancer, and dash 125, 125 is for ovarian, and maybe uh, pancreatic might have another number, breast cancer would have another number, so 125 is for ovarian cancer. Um, so my CA-125 levels and, and I know I told you the first two times skyrocketed. So the oncologist was sort of scratching his noggin about that, saying he's seen it before. Uh, uh, not great, but he says not to worry. Uh, we could have just caught it when it was getting ready to sort of, you know, do its explosion and become like horrible cancer. Uh, I mean, are there not horrible cancer? No, not really, but you know what I mean. So... Um, the next two, or, you know, the next three, uh, my CA-125 level, um, for the third one was like 1,500, fourth was about 14, and, and third, it was 13, or fifth was 13. So, there is a ever so slight decline, um... As the physician's assistant, I said, is is this a normal or, or am I like really slow? Because I it was it's hard for me to remember the CA125 levels from like 20 years ago, but mine were like ungodly through the roof. Like if if I recall, and don't quote me on this, but I thought they were saying like something like 30,000, but I don't know if that's even possible. So don't quote me on that. But it was high. So, um, the physician's assistant said they want them in the low, 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 low hundreds. So, the good news is, is I'm going slowly but surely. So, with that, the past, I don't, I can't even remember if I made a video for, for my fifth, um, uh, treatment. It, I'll get into that in a second. Um, the last treatment was just horrible um like i've just been absolutely exhausted i've had really bad diarrhea um and that's caused my magnesium to just bottom out i've been dehydrated apparently my blood sugar was low i almost passed out at work it, you know it was sort of this whole scarlet o'hara thing you <laughs> know i've got the vapors i'm gonna pass out so that's not me i'm i'm a hardy woman so um i i had to go to the doctor and i was like i just don't feel well you know i called them and i was like i don't want to be a complainer but here's what's going on so they said come in let's test your your counts and everything and it was really dehydrated, low blood sugar, magnesium was bottomed out, and so I had to go in four days in a row for bags of magnesium and bags of hydration. So I just wanted them to give me banana bags like they did on, you know, after they were out drinking on Grey's Anatomy, but they didn't. I've just always wanted to say, I got a banana bag. Um, and so my magnesium, as of today, 
was 1.6. <laughs> and that sounds really low, but apparently normal is, I think, between 1.5 and 2. So I got a little bit to spare there, so <laughs> bring it on. Now, because I had such bad experiences, um, my kidney function has started to decline a little bit. It's still stable, but it has started to decline. My heart rate is going up. And so these chemicals can have those kinds of effects and actually do long-term damage. I've started to have neuropathy in my fingers and toes and feet. Um, if you ever get sort of, you know, that uh, tingling feeling in like the, hopefully you don't, but if you do like that little tingling numbness, um, you should probably consult your doctor, but you can also take B6 and Super B Complex. Who knew? Uh, if that doesn't work, they give you, um, my, my dog is on it right now. It starts with a G, but it's like something else. So <laughs> I guess I could always get into my dog's medicine, but I'm not. Um, anyway, uh, so the doctor said enough. Enough, enough. It's not worth doing this kind of damage and wreaking this kind of havoc on your body. Uh, I said, yay. But I was also kind of worried because I'm like, what does that mean? Are we just stopping? Are we giving up? What are we doing? So what they're doing now, I'm currently on high dosage of like a, I think it's Toxafan and like a Cisplatin and Avastin. The Avastin causes the nose running um so i was at i think a hundred percent on the first two and that's a lot the toxifan really i mean it's got toxic basically and it is a word is the root word so it does a number on your body so what they're doing is they're taking the one big uh, treatment that I get every three weeks and they're saying okay we're gonna slice all of that into thirds I will get a third of that I got a third of that today next Friday I'll get a third dosage and then the next Friday I'll get a third dosage so am I getting less no I'm getting the same amount it's just spread over so you can almost think of it as like a time release as opposed to as as opposed to beating all living hell out of me all at once, somebody just comes by and punches me a couple of times every Friday. So it doesn't hurt as much. It doesn't do as much damage uh, to me altogether. So, But the prognosis is still the same. Um, just spreading out the dosages doesn't make it any less effective. It just uh, spreads it out. So it should still kill the cancer cells the same as it would if I got the big dose. Um, I think the reasoning the doctor was giving me the big dose is maybe to hit it hard at first. But also, um, I wanted to continue working. Apparently, some people are like, I have cancer. I'm not working anymore. So I didn't think about that. Yeah, I don't want to. I, w I want to work. I love I love working, and it makes me feel normal. Um, so he wanted to keep me out of the office as much as possible, so that way I could still have continue working and living a normal life. And if any of you all know me, what the hell does that mean? So now, um, for the next three, well, next two weeks now, I will be in the office getting chemo every Friday. And then after that, after the next two, which including today will be equal one big, um, is equal to one big treatment, I will then have a CT scan. And what they're doing with that is to see if the mass in my lung is actually decreasing. Because, and I ask him, like, well, if my CA-125 levels are going down, of course it's shrinking. Why are you trying to be Debbie Downer? Um, you know, and the nurses, they're, they're awesome there. But they said, well, I mean, clearly it's going down, but we have to check. Uh, you know, trying to be positive. But what can happen is sometimes 
what was the word she used or the phrase? It wasn't false positive, but basically your CA125 levels or whatever cancer you have, so insert your number. Uh, hopefully no one out there has a cancer number and you're just watching this because it's some random... Sorry, my uh, camera got cut off. But what I was saying is um, you could just be watching a, a bald woman. But anyway, um, so I'm having the scan because it could be false positives ish and that's not the term so uh before that you know my um c125 levels for years went up and down up and down and i had like second and third opinions and all this kind of stuff and nobody could figure out why and so this doctor was like look something's going on something is not right and there's a reason that your ca125 levels are spiking and we just have to figure out why and so it was through the